English language doesn't quite catch it. To us, the name Jesus and the Hebrew word Hosanna sound completely unrelated, but in their original language, they make beautiful harmony. Let me explain. When the angel Gabriel first appeared to Mary to tell her that, that she would be the mother of the very Son of God, he also gave her God's command. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. You will call him, in the original language, Yeshua or Joshua, which means the Lord saves. Years later, as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the cry, Hosanna, filled the air. Hoshiana, they said, from the very same verb as Jesus' name. Hoshiana, which literally means, save us now. How fitting was this shout, this cry, as our Savior rode into Jerusalem. Hosanna, just one word in Hebrew that was related to his own name. But in English, we find three more words of truth that summarized everything he came into this world to do. Save us now. And God, as in his grace, has brought us to the beginning of Holy Week yet again. May this cry be found on our lips too. Hosanna, because there is no word more appropriate. It's a cry to a king, and it's a motto for a kingdom. We can almost pinpoint the very day. It was a Sunday in early spring, 30 AD. Jesus set out with his disciples from Bethany, a little village only about three miles from the temple, just on the ridge of the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. How strange that he was going to a city called Jerusalem. That name means house of peace. But by the end of this Passover festival week, the house of peace, Jerusalem, would be shaking with hatred and violence. The crowds nearly rioting and not stopping until the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee was captured, tortured, finally executed. That's what lay at the end of the Palm Sunday road. No matter how lovely and joyful the procession was that afternoon with colorful garments and, and pungent palms paving the way, at the end lay darkness and death. And Jesus knew it the whole time. But his disciples were still in the dark, as was the excited crowd around them. All of them catching sight of Herod's temple with its solid gold-plated facade were much too caught up in the excitement of the moment. Their heads were filled with happy, patriotic thoughts of celebrating Passover in the holy city of God. It was a special time to celebrate their heritage. Even Jews around the world today often close their modern Passover celebrations with the longing prayer, next year in Jerusalem. And the words they were singing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord from Psalm 118. A psalm that was one of the special Passover hymns. A psalm that reflected on the very first Passover and the miraculous deliverance from Egypt that God provided. What could be more appropriate? What could be more traditional or more inspiring? Nothing. But that's exactly where we sense a bit of emptiness in the entire festive scene. By the end of the week, the crowd's mood will have changed. By the end of the week, the disciples will have abandoned Jesus to face his enemies alone and to die alone. The sad reality is that most of the crowd probably cried Hosanna with their voices, but not with the voice of faith. Is it really different today? There's so much talk about faith in this country. Just about everybody claims to have faith, but what exactly is faith? What does it mean to be religious? How do you define spiritual? Sad to say, the prevailing attitude today is that I get to decide what my faith is. I get to decide my personal beliefs and how I will express them in worship or in the way I live my life. That type of thinking can even affect God's people too. Look right here in the gospel. In one sense, the, the cheering crowd had faith, but it became apparent that week that for many people, faith was only custom, or tradition, or ritual, or observance. 
There were curiosity seekers in the crowd, too, some of them saying, who is this? They probably got swept up in the parade. For many, faith was crying at the king, but not crying to the king. A real problem here and in our world today is that people don't see that faith needs an object. Faith isn't just a feeling or a positive vibe. You don't just believe. You don't just have faith. You need to have faith in something or someone. And by God's grace, the Holy Spirit has led you and me to put our faith in Christ. We believe in Christ, who he is and what he did. No, we, we need to, to always remember that so, so our faith doesn't become the faith of the Palm Sunday crowd. Holy Week is an excellent time to remind ourselves of that. With all our special worship services and special liturgies and special decorations of the church, we, we can't come to our Good Friday service just because we like the special service then, the service of darkness, or we really like uh, special times when we'll, for example, have a, a nail to put in the cross, or, or we like to hear the loud noise at the end of the service. We can't come without standing at the foot of the cross in fearful awe mixed with wonder and joy that God chose to do this for us. We can't come to the Easter worship services just because we should at least go to church at Easter, right? Or because we love to see the chancel adorned with lilies or we like the breakfast. We can't come without understanding the power of Christ's resurrection. We must not join with the crowd shouting at the king, lest what God said through Isaiah about his people of old becomes true of us. Isaiah 29 says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. No, do not come to cry Hosanna at the king, but in true faith cry Hosanna to the king. There's a difference. For to cry Hosanna to the king means to confess that he is your only hope of salvation and that without him you are eternally lost. To cry Hosanna to the king means to confess our sins and to recognize the, the, the punishment that our sins deserve, to abandon all hope of saving ourselves and to find some assurance of heaven in our good behavior. It means to come to him spiritually naked and poor and broken and to look to him for clothing and true wealth and healing. To cry Hosanna to the king in true faith means to come to him and plead, save us now. There is no other way. And those who, by God's grace, cry to the king in true faith are heard by him. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain, Psalm 3 verse 4 says. In David's day, the holy mountain was where the Ark of the Covenant was kept on the future site of the temple. But now God's holy mountain is Calvary. How loudly and clearly he answers us there when we cry to him, Hosanna, save us. There on the cross hangs the answer for our problem of sin, the only answer there is. There hangs Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, crowned with thorns then, he is now crowned with glory and honor. He rode into Jerusalem to go to that hill and die for you. We cry to him. We cry with our pains, our hurts, our confusion, our problems, our fears, our doubts about his love for us. And his answer, his answer comes back time and again. I am your king. He's the proof of God's forgiveness and love. He's the proof that the Lord can help you. He's the proof that God will help you, comfort you, encourage you, strengthen you, and equip you for every good work. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard our cry for mercy, as Psalm 28, 6 says. Hosanna. It's a cry to a king, but it's also a motto for his kingdom. Matthew records that the crowd sang, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. People and nations choose mottos to reflect on who they are and what they stand for. Think of America's motto, 
e pluribus unum, out of many, one. It reflects the truth that America welcomes all that it is the great melting pot. Hosanna, a fitting motto for the kingdom of Christ. Save us now. Christ's kingdom is about one thing, salvation. Eternal release from the bondage of sin, eternal life in indescribable bliss and joy. This is the goal of our faith in Christ, the eternal salvation of our souls. This is the reason he is king and the reason he has brought us into his kingdom. But who understood that on Palm Sunday or during the rest of Holy Week? The crowd certainly didn't. They thought Jesus had come in riding on a donkey as David used to ride donkeys as his royal mounts to set up a political dynasty. Israel would again be great as it had been under David. Jesus would drive the Romans out. He would heal their diseases. He would multiply five loaves of bread every day so everyone had enough to eat. He would bring worldly peace and prosperity. We know many in the crowd were expecting all that because St. Mark's Gospel records that the crowd also shouted, Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Mark chapter 11. But Jesus would say to Pilate later that week, My kingdom is from another place, in John 18. No, his kingdom is about eternal salvation, not international peace treaties. His kingdom wasn't about winning against the Romans, but about winning over Romans and Greeks and Jews and Gentiles all over the world to cry Hosanna to the King in true faith. And we, as members of the kingdom, we want to continue to focus on that. Christ has called each of us to preach the good news of the kingdom, that salvation is free and already won by him. Everyone who believes will inherit an eternal kingdom in heaven. That is a beautiful and powerful motto to proclaim, a motto that gives true hope, true joy, true peace to a world that so desperately needs these things. So while others, he has said to say even some Christian churches, look for a golden age Christian millennium here on earth. Brothers and sisters, especially this Holy Week, let us shout Hosanna, the motto of the kingdom. Proclaim with joy what John heard all heaven say in Revelation. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Hosanna. Save us now. Yes, that's what our King Jesus, Yeshua, rides into Jerusalem to do. Yes, that is what the cross assures us he did do. Yes, that's what the empty tomb on Easter guarantees he will also come back to do. That's what the King is all about. That's what the kingdom is all about. God bless your worship this holy week. Amen. And I say, I say, I say, can't be that easy. And he said, he said, and no, it wasn't easy.